is um, what we've got here is the Tinkercad model for the revisor. Um, I just wanted to go over a quick rundown of how it all kind of goes together. First place we should start is going to be with this front faceplate here. Um, this piece right here um, actually consists of three separate pieces. I did that so we could print them um, on a smaller print bed, make it nice and easy. Um, the first part is going to be the left side, which consists of this right here, comes down here, and over here. This is basically the area that contains the, uh, the Raspberry Pi and your switches. Um, so you're going to print this piece off here. Um, it's actually going to lay um, with the back portion where the Raspberry Pi goes in, um, in there, the back portion down. So we're actually looking at the, this is like a top down view of how you're going to print it. Um, so you're going to print this piece here, then the right hand side which has the screen is actually split into two separate pieces. Originally I had it as one right here. Um, I found that that was just a little bit too big to print laying down flat. Um, so I split it up to these two right here. Um, so you've got an A and a B, um, which is how those are labeled on the uh, the actual STL files. So you've got A and B. Um, basically what you're looking at is this piece for the left hand portion here, this piece for the right hand portion. Um, they're going to join together. Let's see if I can halfway line these up. There you go, something like that. They're going to join together like that. Um, and what you've got is your one bolt two bolts. So two bolts to hold this together um, and then you've got one, two, three bolts to join it to the left hand side here. Um, so to get this front whole front portion together you've got one, two, three, four and five bolts um, to hold the th three separate pieces together uh, to get your front face or the front uh, part of the body all together there did the same thing with the keyboard area. When this folds out, um, you know, it's going to be one piece, but it's printed as two separate pieces. Um, again, you've got a left and a right piece. This one is joined together a little bit different. This is recessed right here, um, where that green square is, right there. Um, let's take a look. Let's see if I can pop this up for you. Yep. Um, so it's just a little recessed piece. This little bracket's going to pop in there that's a separate printed piece that pops on you've got one two three four bolts holding that in um, and then at the bottom you've got this foot right here um, so you're gonna print that that attaches to the bottom so you've got a bolt two bolts that come through this that are gonna be slightly longer then you've got the other two bolts in the back that can be shorter um, and then they did just have an acorn nut on the bottom of each of these uh, to secure it down and that gives it a nice smooth um, footing you know when it rests down on the table or whatever you're using um, so the next piece that we're gonna have um, we could take a look at these hinges um, you've got two separate sets of hinges you've got the hinges that are made to attach to the keyboard area and the big difference with these is they've got this little side piece um, which is going to let me zoom this in here. That is going to be used right here to attach the um, the webbing, the uh, the nylon strap, and these are going to have the strap that connects to these little clips, and that's what actually secures the keyboard closed. Um, so you've got this one and this one. Uh, these ones I actually printed standing up, so the bottom would be here and here. Um, and with that, actually, no, those I didn't. I'm sorry, I just lied to you. Um, these are going to print flat, and so they're going to build up. Actually, I, th I think those you could probably print any way you wanted. Those ones are not too bad. I was trying to cut down on the supports. Um, these I printed standing up, so I mean, you can you can mess around with those. Um, these had a slight lip on them 
originally that had me printing those different. All right, disregard that. Uh, you could print the, print the hinges any way you want. Um, play around with that. Um, you've got these, same thing. You've just got, they're bolted right through. Now, a lot of these components have multiple, um, multiple uses. The hinges, for example, um, you know, they're obviously the hinge, but the fact that they extend past, it joins these two pieces together, the front and the back portions. So that bolt right there joins it together. Same thing with this one. Um, I did the same thing with the clips on top. The clips, the female portion of the clip is going to actually act as a bracket to hold the front and the back half together. So a lot of them have a kind of a dual feature that hold everything together. Um, so if you're disassembling this, you're going to be taking, um, you know, brackets off and things like that. Um, that's why I tried to design it so it had some access in the back. Um, so once you've got your two front pieces together that make up this, um, and you've got your keyboard together, which consists of this square piece and the foot on the bottom. Um, once you've got that all bolted together and you've got your hinges attached, you know, from the for the keyboard side and the uh, the front main faceplate side in here, um, once you've got that all together, you can basically slide these right in, you know, the blue into the purple there. Um, and then you're going to use the long bolts that are in the um, the parts list there. You're going to put those through. Um, when I printed it, I just had to thread it in. It was a, a solid thread. It's threaded through. Um, then I just put an acorn nut here on the inside and another acorn nut here on the inside, um, you know, to secure that down. Um, and it, it's got a nice loose hinge. It's not, you know, it's not grinding together or anything. It's pretty smooth, so that works pretty well. Once you have that, um, the next thing that you could probably do is going to be put the Raspberry Pi and all the internal components in. Now I'm just going to take that out for a second so we could take a quick look. Let's move this out of our way. Now, what we've got inside, you've got the Raspberry Pi and that's going to sit right behind this opening here the revisor logo kind of vent here. Um, this vent right there, that is going to get attached at the same time as the Raspberry Pi. So the way that I did it is you're going to put the vent on the front. You've got the one, two, three, four bolt holes. So you're going to thread this through. And then on the back side, those same bolts are going to thread through the Pi itself. Um, that's what's going to hold the pie on. That was actually a pretty tight fit um, with the M3 bolts that I used on this. So your mileage might vary, but you might just need to take something and just very carefully um, open these holes up slightly. It's tight. Um, I don't know if it was, you know, the way I was doing it. I just took something in there. Um, I actually took a Dremel bit and just opened it up slightly slightly just to make it a little easier a little less stress on the uh, on the board um, once that's attached you've got the pie in so that's nice and secure um, you can even throw some nuts on the back to hold it in I don't even think I used nuts on the back of mine it was snug enough that it kinda threaded right through um, so once you've got that in you can slap the screen in the screen that I used um, I actually had to flip the screen upside down um, to get it to fit in there nice with all the uh, ports to line up on the same side as the Raspberry Pi so they're not facing you know the wrong way and then I gotta loop that around um, so if you've got the screen you take it flip it upside down then attach it and that's the same thing I just took the bolts came in through the front so you've got the nice finished side of the bolt on the front pop that through that'll bolt the board um, of the screen right right to that and that has all your components right there um, I'll do another uh, quick little video to show you how all the components attach it's pretty self-explanatory um, you know I used a lot of USB things I used some custom uh, soldered um, switches onto the USBs but that's really not a big deal 
um, but basically connect everything up get you know that all nice and connected you don't want to really have to play with that too too much um, it's got the ribbon cable for the HDMI which is pretty fragile so you just want to make sure you're nice and careful with that alright once you've got that we're going to go to the back here um, back piece same thing two pieces it's split right here right down that line right there um, it goes down and it's split right here down right there so you've got the two pieces and I did the same thing this side is gonna be your base for that and this side is your base for this side so that when they join together they've got the nice finished part connecting so there's no weird wonky warping uh, going on there um, so that is going to get connected together with this top vent piece which again is going to act as a bracket to hold those two sides together and it's going to cover this um, expansion hole here um, so you've got this 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 you've got six bolts okay that's going to hold that all together that's going to join it on the top and then on the bottom we've got another one of those square pieces um, that's going to join that up with just four more bolts okay um, you've got the vent which is going to attach here you can leave that open while you're doing it um, and again you've got the piece right here the battery pack um, so if you're using the rav power battery um, I've got that right there before you attach to that this is what it's going to look like on the back okay so you've got plenty of room to get in there and play around with different plugs and stuff um, once you've got everything wired up and all taken care of um, you can pop this on another uh, way that I did it is I waited to attach this to the front okay um, until everything was wired up now the way this is going to attach to the front like I said is going to be these two top um, female portions of the clip here those are going to hold the back to the front on the side you've got the piece which is going to house your um, trackpad so your trackpad will slide in and then this pops over the trackpad and it's got one two three four bolts again that holds that on once that's in it's going to connect your front and your back okay so you've got that that's going to hold the front and back together then on this side you're going to have this large uh, cover for this opening here Well, apparently we've got multiple copies. There we go. <laughs> All right. So you've got this opening here. That's going to cover that. Um, and it's also going to join the front and the back together. Um, on this, I've got my uh, brackets to hold the shoulder strap that goes across. I, that's a work in progress. I got that printed and on there now. But I do want to make something that's a little bit more... Um, Sturdy is not the right word because it's held up pretty good. I just want to play with that design a little bit. Um, but you just loop it through here. The shoulder strap goes over. Same thing on the other side. All right, right there. Okay. Um, you've got this hole. I've got used. Um, this hole uses a. Uh, it's a car um, USB 3 and an audio out. Um, and that just pops right through. It's friction fit in there. Um, there's a nut that came with it for the back side, like a large plastic nut. You don't need that. It friction fits so well in there um, that I didn't need that. It was a softer plastic. So you pop that in. You've got your wires that connect. Um, the USB obviously goes to the USB on the Pi, and the audio um, is going to go into this audio jack here on the Pi. Um, I've got a 90-degree adapter so that it comes off and doesn't smash into the top portion. Um, on the bottom hole here, I used a uh, a button that I found. I think it was actually in the top, and it was the uh, button that was in a display for LED Christmas lights. You would press the button, and it would give you like a demo of the of the lights. It would turn that on and off. I ripped that out and put that in there. Um, and I was going to attach that to the GPIO uh, pins, but I'm going to wind up uh, making a cartridge-based system here. So I'm going to wait to start attaching things like that um, until 
the cartridge system is finished. Now this piece right here, you know, it's just a cover. It's a vented cover for that back portion. Um, this hole here, right there, and this hole up top, I put four expansions, uh, different, you know, modules and things that we could print and put there. Um, so for now, with no modules or any additions, I've got that on there. Uh, let's see, what else am I forgetting? Oh, the um, the fan. I've got the uh, on the Pi. I have a um, I've got my heat sinks on there, and then I've just got a small fan that I just glued right to the heat sink. I'm sure there's more elegant ways to attach it. I just glued it to it. It's working. It's keeping it real nice and cool. So if it works, then it uh, then it works. You know, if it works, it's not stupid. I guess so that's what we're doing. Um, let's see the mail portion of the clips. Uh, you've got your uh, webbing that comes off here, goes over the top. I just took the other side of the web, cut it. You know, you take a lighter and you kind of heat it up so it melts the edge of the webbing. Um, so that's a, a finished edge. Then I just took this uh, portion here, and all I did was basically clamped it in between the clip itself and this little bracket so your your webbing is going to go in between here I made it flush and then just used two smaller M3 bolts to clamp that down and seat it in there nicely and it, and it holds uh, it holds really well it's really tight so you know I've got that on this side and I've got it on the other side as well um, as far as everything else goes I think we covered all the basics on how to put that together. Um, this right here, this piece, that's going to house your two switches. So you've got the, um, you know, your two mechanical switches here and here. Um, those are just going to feed through there. So you've got your wires coming out the back. Um, let's take a look. Let's get this all out of our way so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, so those are going to come through. You're going to have those. Um, and then you're going to wire it into a USB. So I've got the two USBs that come out the hole and go to your battery pack. Um, I just wired these in line uh, with the USB cords. I cut the cords, made them a little bit smaller, more manageable, put the switches in so that um, I could switch the screen on, power to the screen, and I could switch the power to the Pi on with the other one. So one is gonna be the power for the screen, the other is the power for the Pi. The reason I did that is I was running into issues. If the screen wasn't powered before the Pi, then the Pi would not recognize that there was a HDMI screen attached and it would try to run headless and wouldn't recognize the screen at that point. Um, so the quickest and simplest thing for me to do with my limited uh, knowledge on the whole ordeal was let's get the power to that before it gets to that. So that's what I did. Um, so with this you can you know obviously print a piece that has more holes for switches put more switches in there for whatever you want um, which I might do in the future so I kinda like how that wound up turning out um, it gives you a little bit more room to add stuff and do whatever you want so that's that was ultimately the goal um, so here is the bulky luggable totally impractical impractical but uh, kinda fun little computer that we've got here the revisor and I hope that helped you uh, with any assembly instructions and see a little bit better how this goes together. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. I will try to help you out the best I can. I've got all the files up on Thingiverse, and uh, I'm going to be posting more as I develop more uh, expansions and ways to uh, play around with this and make it do some interesting stuff. So thanks for listening. I appreciate everybody and all their attention they've given this. Uh, I really didn't think anybody was going to... Um, you know, pay this much mind. So it's kind of cool that people found it interesting and are uh, are interested in it. So thanks for following along. And uh, this is Dave. And have fun with it. Thanks.